thank you so much for joining. And uh, Lisa, thank you for coming in last minute as a co-moderator. I, I want to start off by, I, I, I would assume a lot of people here don't know what covenants are. I myself have never even really studied covenants really, really deeply. I know about them, obviously, but I want to take this time where we can all learn it. You can essentially teach Lisa and I about covenants. This can be an educational panel, so then the audience can learn with us what are covenants. And I want to start with, when I first started doing research, I said, what was the first covenant? And what came up with, what came up on Google was, the first covenant was between God and Abraham. And the way this, this covenant is satisfied is Jewish men got circumcised. So I want to know, how, how does this relate to Bitcoin? Maybe we can start there, work our way from, you know, a few thousand years ago and work our way here to Bitcoin. Just kidding. But um, like I said, a uh, few minutes on the clock, let's do very, very quick introductions, 10 words or less kind of thing, and let's get rolling into the education. So well, start yeah, with Lisa. Hi, I'm Lisa, also an um, and I work on Bitcoin. Is, we need Mike for Lisa? I'll introduce yeah. myself in the meantime while we figure that out. Hi, I'm Jeremy. I like Bitcoin and I like covenants and I hope Bitcoin can one day have covenants. Amazing. So my name is Brock. Um, I'm a Bitcoiner and a Bitcoin dev. I think I started with Bitcoin like five years ago or more or less, uh, you know, initially exploring and building around mining wallets, payments, and I initial uh, and I, you know, finally ended in this covenant rabbit hole. So it's, it's a really interesting place. Exciting times. Yeah. Hello, I'm Sanket, and I'm excited about Covenants, and I, like Jeremy, I want to see Covenants in Bitcoin. Cool. And you want to the mic? Hello? Hello? Okay. Hello? Technical based feedback. So, so, so uh, Nifty, if you, if you want, for now, if you, uh, when you have a question, we'll just, yeah, we'll just repeat. Uh, and then, in, in the sake of time, maybe we just kind of skip a little bit of the 2,000 years of history of covenants mm -hmm. and just kind of jump in it uh, for the sake of time. So uh, how, how do we, where are we at right now? How, how, do we, how do we get here? Like, what is a covenant in terms of Bitcoin, Jeremy? Yeah, um, so one of the things that I use to explain covenants is that Bitcoin UTXOs, which hopefully we know what those are, that's like a, a coin that you have, is a little bit like a treasure chest. And when you open it up, usually, you get some coins out and you can put those into whatever new treasure chest you want. And that treasure chest could have whatever locks you want to have on it. A covenant is like when you open it up and then instead of gold coins or something, you see it's like Jimi Hendrix's guitar and it says, please only put this into a guitar case in the future. And you're like, okay, so if I open this up and you're gonna leave a little note maybe that says, yeah, when you open this up, please put it into a guitar case. Maybe after it's been opened 10 times, you say something like, take it to the guitar shop to get tuned. That's a covenant. It's like you open up these treasure chests and then you find something that maybe has some additional restriction of what you can do with it. And that's maybe a little bit heady, but you can imagine in Bitcoin we would have something like, hey, open this up and then move it. And then after you've moved it, you have six months before some other action can happen. Once you take that action, you have a two week grace period, that type of thing. Because we're only thinking about Bitcoin, you can't transact Jimi Hendrix's guitar on the blockchain. I, I like that analogy. You have to put a guitar in a guitar, a guitar case. That's kind of like Provisioning it. Uh, did you test? Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. great. Oh, sorry. Okay, cool. Um, should I do a quick end? So, do, do, do a quick right. intro. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm Lisa, also Nifty, and I work on lightning and core lightning and watching. And I, I didn't really do an intro for myself, so we'll, we'll, we'll be asking the questions here, trying to learn with you guys about these covenants. I'm, I'm Michael Tidwell, I work at 70 as an infrastructure engineer. Um, and, and what you missed is uh, Jimi Hendrix guitar case. The, the analogy here is if I give you this guitar, then you have to put it in a guitar, guitar case. You can't say that word today. Um, is that kind of? Yeah, like you, know, you have a special object and you've got to like, preserve something. Of it's got to be in a guitar case. You have to keep it under some sort of special rule. And you know, rather than just like you know, gold coins that you could take out of your treasure chest and put into another treasure chest of your choosing, you've got to keep it in something that has a special format. So is this, I mean, I think like most people have heard of NFTs, which are like non-fungible tokens, right? So how are you going to take Bitcoin and make it look like a guitar? Like, 
you know, like, like why, you know, the nice thing about Bitcoin is every Bitcoin is a Bitcoin, right? Like you can exchange one Bitcoin with another person. We call that fungible because you know that when you get Bitcoin, it's the same as like any other Bitcoin and all Bitcoin is like pretty much equal, right? So I'm willing to transact on Bitcoin because I know that I'm going to get Bitcoin in return, right? Like if you're turning Bitcoin into guitar, like how does Bitcoin become a guitar one? And like two, like, yeah. Isn't that like, are you making like NFTs then? Like, uh, yeah, yeah, so we're just using the guitar as an example of something that has some additional restriction. Mm -hmm. uh, an example of Bitcoin that's more like a guitar might be Bitcoin that you intend to give to your spouse when you die. And you might want to have an additional covenant on that that says, well, if you claim access to this because you're claiming that I'm dead, maybe there should be some timeout period where I can say I'm not actually dead. And that would be more like, you know, there's some restriction on that. But why are you giving your money, your Bitcoin to your spouse, Jeremy? Like, uh... I don't have a spouse. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, my spouse would have all money. So, so, so let, me, let me ask kind of like a higher level question. Do covenants, do covenants currently exist in Bitcoin? Uh, uh, I can go with this. And the answer is, we don't know. Like, <laughs> Bitcoin script is like complicated. We have this opcode called object sync, which allows, which is most fundamental opcode to Bitcoin where you check a signature that the transaction has valid signature with respect to the given public key. And by its nature, this opcode relies on some data from the transaction itself. And in some way, uh, the, the data from the transaction is available to the script. And given all the different opcodes we have today, there may be covenants may be possible, but we just don't know how to do them yet. A uh, good way might be to cleanly add support for covenants, but do we have covenants today or no? Uh, I don't know. Like for example, Andrew Bostra has a good blog post on if we just had opcat, which is looks like a simple opcode where you just add two like, concatenate two elements on the stack, and uh, that can have covenants. Like yeah, just the nature of Bitcoin script itself is like I. We can't answer this so I would actually take the side of saying uh, that we that and this is maybe an important second topic is that we do have covenants uh, that like a, a lock time a check lock time verify or check sequence verify in my opinion are a covenant because it's saying here's a coin that you can only spend after a certain amount of time so it's something beyond just who the owner is about how the coin can be spent I would consider that a covenant the thing that we're that we're talking about when we say we're not sure and we usually shorthand covenants for this is Covenants that really restrict where you can spend the coin to, um, it, not just the how. And uh, that, yeah, we don't know. As far as I can tell, we don't have them um, at, at this point, but maybe somebody would find something we do. Uh, right, but, uh, but by, by the definition that we're kind of talking about, it seems covenants, by definition, have some kind of condition on how they're spent or how Bitcoin is spent. Is that, is that okay as a layman term definition? I think you just want to add more so than something like a simple list of signatures. Okay. Because that, that's kind of like, that's just who owns because, it. Because that's every Bitcoin. And you can say that's a covenant, but that's just like who owns it. And it's like an additional restriction. Okay. And Brock, did you want to add anything? Oh, I think uh, we don't have NFTs on Bitcoin yet, but uh, you take so sort of NFTs when you think about it. And I think, yeah, his German guitar analogy is, you know, the so stuff, yeah, you can constrain your textures in how they can spend, right? Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, and you can do covenants with some additional opcodes like check, short tricks, but the entry barrier of that, doing that is extremely high, right? Um, but you know, covenants in short is a pre to a transaction in advance of creating an address, right? In short, and I think from what I like observe from the community, I think we will get there at some point, right? Uh, but the question is really in what capacity. Uh, we, we are seeing many competing ideas and proposals, uh, and more and more to come, right? But uh, you know, each proposal have a different level of complexity and you know flexibility. Uh, you know, each have their trade-offs. Uh, it will be interesting to see which ones pay the way for Bitcoin. And can we talk about some of the proposals that for covenants? I, I know what in 2013 or some some Greg Maxwell made a post back in the day. There's been I don't know if that was quite a proposal, more of just an idea, but. What proposals currently exist today that are covenant proposals, I guess you could say? Is that for me? All right. So, <laughs> um, I have a favorite one, uh, which I'll tell you about last. But uh, there are a lot of, I think one thing that's important to understand when we say the word proposal, it means different things. So there is a BIP, which is a Bitcoin improvement proposal. 
And that is a proposal that is, that is like very structured, and uh, they can be at different levels of readiness. And so when you talk about a proposal, um, there's also a sort of idea, right, of, hey, what if we did this? So there are a lot right now of what if we did this is, and as far as I'm aware, there's only like one or maybe two things that are kind of more on the side of like here is a concrete thing that we could do. So in the, the scope of things that are like here are ideas, people are talking about what if we added like a language that itself in scripting was maybe you know like a Lisp or some sort of like actual programming language to Bitcoin, then we could compute any arbitrary covenant we ever could want. We could say all the possible covenants we could express. That's something people are thinking about, but nobody has like a code sample that you could run and try with. And then um, there are some maybe like application specific covenants that are like rather than this big general purpose thing, like what if we just had a covenant that let us manipulate a tap script and manipulate the tree that we've seen. There's one called tap with update verify that people are getting maybe a little excited about. There are some other ones people have talked about as well, but all those things are kind of in the space of, hey, I've got a cool idea, don't know exactly what it would look like. Um, the, the two that have uh, some potential for covenants that are in the more concrete phase where it's something maybe that could be considered for merging uh, and activation at some point in the next like year or two would be check template verify, which is the proposal that I work on, and any prev out, which is one that is in the Lightning community primarily, but has applications for covenants that are not like if you said we can remove covenants from any prev out, the Lightning community probably would do it because they're focused on it for different applications as sort of a side effect. Um, and so for check template verify, um, I I like covenants, and I think that generally covenants, you know, are, are something we should explore. But a lot of people in the community, like Greg Maxwell, in this original post where he shared it, had a lot of reservations around: Are covenants good? Are they bad? Can they have bad, you know, bad things happen? And so when I designed CTV in 2019, uh, I said, Can I make a covenant that is the simplest possible thing that that basically, if you don't want CTV, then you will not want any covenant system ever at least in terms of functionality. Maybe you'll disagree from a product management point of view. But if you say CTV is bad, here's why CTV is bad, then we can rule out all covenants forever. But if you're like, CTV is good, like, well, we'll get something done maybe, and then we can talk about the more sophisticated things. So it's like CTV is like the smallest unit of covenant where it's like, hey, if we can prove that this is bad, then we know covenants are bad. But if this is good, there might be more opportunity. Yeah, I, I think that's how I would describe it. And just in terms of, you know, like the doneness of the proposal, it, it is in a form where like, you could merge, activate, and release it, you know, starting now if you wanted to. So it's more in the category of product management decision rather than there's still an engineering question around how would we actually implement this thing. Uh, I, yeah, I think that's, I think those are all really interesting things about how we like, kind of move Bitcoin forward, et cetera, and, you know, this covenant proposal. Covenants will have to go through that process at some point. I think, like, as, like, a, as a person who works on Bitcoin stuff, though, I'm going to be honest, like, I'm not totally, I think covenants are cool, technically, there's a lot of really cool stuff, I think, that they enable, but I'm not totally sold that we need to make Bitcoin more complicated and add more ways of making it harder to spend Bitcoin. Uh, so maybe I think there's two things here is like, you know, there's a bunch of different proposals about how to do covenants. Um, I think maybe we could talk about like, what's, how accessible are these, like, how, like, in terms of like, you know, like, is it, are these things that like, everyday Bitcoiners, are, are we gonna make it easier for them, is this gonna make it easier for them to like, uh, secure their Bitcoin? Is it like, I don't know, yeah, like, if, like why, what so, about covenants of like, So let's, let's yeah. start with like, the major, like beneficial use cases maybe, where y'all can talk about like yeah. one, one that you're interested in, for instance, is security, like how, how does this benefit us? <laughs> yeah, you know? I think, yeah, we have some very, I have some favorite proposals like CTV, I think it has many, it handles many use cases. I think the primary one, my favorite one is channel factories, so that you can, you know, open thousands of channels in a single UTXO, uh, and you, you don't necessarily need to close them because they can, they can source you inbound liquidity later. But also, I have also tap with update verify also can uh, potentially bring you know channel factories as well, um, so that you can open. It's a shared UTXO model. You can open like uh, thousands of channels as well. But I think when you want to close them, uh, you only close the channel you are interested in. 
as opposed to CTV when you have to you have to declare the old channels first to close them. But anyway, um, I think uh, one other interesting use case of CTV is Bose. Um, you can uh, as well as channel factories again. Um, but I think you know overall when you look at covenants, everyone can benefit from it. Like if you're a lightning enthusiast, you can benefit because you can bring L2 to channel factories and non-interactive channel setups. If you're a self-custody guy, great it's for you. It's great for you. I mean, you could bring, bring balls to Bitcoin uh, and I don't know some sort of advanced self-custody. Um, if you're a you know Bitcoin scaling nerd, it's good for you. Maybe you could bring later on you know some points north to Bitcoin. Maybe trust those SPV sidechains and us. Yeah. So yeah, uh, first responding to Lisa's question. Uh, where like why are we adding this complicated stuff? So like definitely it should be determined like defined by what use case you're adding. So in this case we have some scaling benefits by proposals like coin pools where one UTXO would be this is not specific to check template verify or any single proposal, but with general some covenant support we could have coin pools where you have one UTXO which is controlled by multiple parties. Uh, like if you imagine Bitcoin scaling to the world, we need some sort of coin pool proposal. Then secondly, uh, vaults, uh, and I'd like to like distinguish between CTV vaults and more powerful vaults. Uh, and I think, like for at least for me, covenants are kind of like the end game. Like I, like well, we need to have some sort of self custody solution more powerful than you, uh, than what we have today. And I would not be comfortable like storing huge amount of bitcoins in what we have uh, like in the recommended security setup today. For example, in governance which were just suggested in the original paper by our favorite professor, uh, we had a design where even if you lose your cold keys, uh, you could still like mm, get in a race with the attacker and try to burn your phones. So that offers a new level of security which we currently don't have with like any form of governance or even with CTV we don't get that form of security. And so there are these new use cases which governance enable that we, sh that we don't get if we don't have them. Secondly, uh, it is often, that's the most fundamental part, like if people are using governance and if you're not using governance then it doesn't affect you. Like new proposals, sure, they do affect you. You should care about a few things when new proposals are suggested, like is your phone not doing more work than what is getting, like, uh, is, are there any denial of service concerns uh, about it? Maybe, like, you could do weird, funky stuffs with uh, covenants, but when we suggest proposals, we should make sure that, you know, those concerns uh, are addressed properly. So, um, well, I'll, I'll, before, just, just to kind of rephrase what we're talking about, I mean, we've talked about channel factory, so opening up thousands of channels in one transaction. Right now, if you open up a, ch a channel on Lightning, that's one transaction, right? So we, we're, we're talking about general scale, we're talking about uh, vaults, which enable security. You, you even said right now you don't feel comfortable with what's yeah. available, so you would actually, <laughs> you, you feel uncomfortable being a Bitcoiner right now with the current technology is what, is what you're saying, and, and, and you would feel more comfortable with vaults and, and covenants that enable those things. So. Those are those are some of the. Did you did you want to add anything? Well, so, yeah, I, I was just going to add maybe two quick points. Sure. Uh, one is that like I hope in the next couple of years we're able to add like tens or hundreds of billions of more bitcoiners. And even if we're like coming up with better things in the long run, I would really like if the story that we have for every one of those users coming on is that we get them started with something that's more secure or more scalable. And I think that that's why I at least you know people critique that I say maybe like urgency, but like I try to use the urgency because for every user coming in, I want to give them the best that we know how to do. And the second point that I would make, which which is like, should we be adding more complexity? is, uh, you know, like, sorry, the complexity is already here and people are doing these things, but either in more centralized, trusted, you know, trusted means not trustworthy, maybe a, a linguistic work, by using a trusted party uh, ways, and, and these things, I think, are, are just concretely worse. So if the market's already adopting solutions like that, we should do something that reduces the amount of trusted parties required for things people are already doing. So now, are you convinced I mean, it sounds like we're making a trade-off here between complexity and some amount of like security or like functionality, right? So, um, yeah, I don't know. I no, I don't. I don't know if I am totally convinced. It is often, right? Uh, well, actually, 
to just on the specific word complexity, uh, the, the, the protocol, for example, for opening up lightning channels with covenants is simpler than the protocol for opening lightning channels without covenants. And so that's something where actually by having a slightly better technology, we can reduce complexity in other parts of the stack. So the overall complexity goes down. So I have a question for you, Lisa. Um, is there, and maybe there's another way, but how do you, how, how can you open up and scale Lightning in terms of opening up a ton of channels without covenants? Is there another way? Mm, right now, every channel is represented by a UTXO. Mm -hmm. um, which I, I would say that's kind of simple in terms of like when people are in a channel, they understand what they own. It's a shared UTXO, right? So maybe the complexity in opening it is a little hard, but the simplicity of what you own when you open a channel is very straightforward, I would say. Um, so like it's an on-chain you know, on thing. You can look it up on a block explorer. You can see where your channel funds are. Um, yeah, so like, that's, so, it, but that the limit on that then is that every channel open must be represented by an on-chain output. Is this like dichotomy, or is this like trade-off here, complexity versus scale? Is that kind of how we would see this, or is that not? Is that a bad simplification? Um, well, 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 so one, one of the things that I try to emphasize is that um, when you create a channel, uh, let's say that there are. Uh, like the maximum is something around like 20,000 people trying to open channels in a given block. Like it's, it's probably a little bit less than that, probably more like 5,000 people trying to open up channels. Sure, probably block. like four or 5,000. Yeah, if, that would be like yeah. the maximum, right? And then what's interesting is as soon as you have 5,001 people, you will now over a long time have an infinite list of people trying to open channels. And so you end up in a world where everybody who wants a channel is now not gonna have a channel, they're gonna have to go to like a trusted service that says, yeah, we're not gonna rug you on opening this channel. And then that you can't look up in a block explorer either, because it's, and then you might say, oh, well, we can only support this many users. So I would rather have a pathway to supporting a larger number of users where they have to do something slightly different than say we're bounded by this constraint of Bitcoin and we can only support top tier users at this amount. People who are willing to pay for that 5,000 per block space if they want it, but now we're able to grow the pie and support more users overall. So, so the human, humanitarian Jeremy Rubin wants even poor people to use Bitcoin. I'm for the floods, man. Okay. And so again, thank you. Just, yeah. this, is, this is often so you can still do what you are doing today. Like, and as long as what other people are doing with their UTXOs, you should only be concerned that it does not increase your verification costs, which can be evaluated per proposal. It, it actually should decrease your costs, because like, if there's 5,000 people, presumably like, you know, half of them are probably okay with using the more scalable thing. That, you know, it doesn't decrease block space demand, but it like lets you have more priority for if you really do need that space for an immediate open. Yeah, but I guess like so, it sounds like if we're adding all this, if we're, but then you're changing the model then, so it's not one UTXO for channel right, it's something else. So now you need like more tooling and more like ways to see like the visibility, etc. Right. So I think like adding adding covenants is more like you need more. There's going to be more. We need more infrastructure for these things, right? Yep. That's kind of what I think. We need more tooling for these kind of use cases. Right? And, and I think that this is sort of the, um, and maybe this is like the magic of CTV as a covenant solution, is that the thing that CTV expresses is purely just a list of transactions that would get played in the future. And so there's no sort of really complicated infrastructural need. For something like a Lightning node, all you have to do is say, okay, we're aware of these things that are pending transactions and we're able to see that they're CTV so we can prove that they would happen in the future. And then you would just count those as fully confirmed rather than just sitting in the mempool unconfirmed. And that, that's the only difference for the more interpretive things, like even things based in like any prev out or like you know, those types of channel factories, well then you've got to like be like constantly like rebinding and scanning and things like that. And those have a lot more infrastructure requirements, but in terms of like an immediate migration path, we can like probably get something working pretty easily and then do the more complicated stuff in like the span of like decades or whatever. I, I, I kind of want to go for it. So. Yeah, so like in terms of uh, like, uh, like I know we are discussing CTV a lot, but in, like I'd just like to like, you know, highlight one of the things where uh, like I'm sort of uh, trying to address to the crowd who think that governance or in particular some form of governance are dangerous and uh, CTV in one proposal is like motivated by the design to avoid certain set of governance, which we call as, we don't have the time to get into it, but recursive governance or unenumerated governance. 
uh, I think rather we should, as a community, uh, like regardless we should have CDB or should not have CDB, we should try to address those concerns of people who are uh, against uh, like recursive governance because they enable new use cases. Then, uh, like, uh, CDB, it is independent of the issue of CDB, but I don't want the motivation for CDB to be, uh, oh, look, we are trying to avoid these dangerous things. The motivation can be, look, this is simpler, that's why we should do it. It's fine, but there are a lot of people who are advocating this because they want to avoid something, uh, uh, seemingly the dangers of recursive governance. And if you refer back to the post from Greg Maxwell, you'd see that uh, it does not say that there are dangerous things. He actually, chats, in some way, challenges everyone, like, what dangerous things can you do with governance? Um, so, yeah, I can't get into the technical well, details right now, but that's just... Well, I, I, I kind of disagree. We, we're already over time, and I say we just keep going until we get kicked off, because I think this is kind of interesting. We've got time, so. Yeah, yeah so, so, I mean, if y'all are cool with it, I mean, the audience yeah, yeah. is cool with it. I, I, I think this is super important to talk about, because I was actually wanting to bring that up, the recurse, like, let's play devil's advocate just a little bit here, and talk about maybe some potential security issues with governance, maybe are addressed with the idea, you know, with CTV or with other ideas. What 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 could go wrong with covenants? Is there potentially a bounty, you know, like, you know what I mean? So, like, so I, I think one thing that, um, like, look, look, I actually believe in, like, doing this process to get towards as much covenants as we can do. So, like, I'm on board with that. I think I just want to be a friend to the people who are, like, more conservative. And I think a fair thing that they can ask is, okay, it's not enough that you can say there's some argument that like these things aren't bad. Please prove to me that it's safe. And until we get to that level of sophistication, I think that a more conservative approach is ultimately what the community wants. Um, and I am trying to cater to the community more than I'm trying to do the thing that I want, even though I, I might want something more personally. Overall, I just want something that's going to let us do at least like half of the cool things. Okay, so I kind of disagree, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I kinda disagree yeah, with this over here. Uh, let's, for example, take the example of, uh, this is not a good analogy, but just for argument's sake, let's take the example of Web Taproot. If we just like try to address a subset of community which said that this is not quantum secure, for example, and we modified Web Taproot to you know, do something dangerous and try to get everyone in, we would not have this proposal that we have today. Instead, what we work towards is like addressing concerns of people like, look, quantum computers aren't going to come tomorrow, and even if we have them, we have bigger problems, right? So it's not a fair critique because that would also make a complicated solution, whereas CDV is simpler. So coming back to the point, I think we should, like, uh, suggesting the community, uh, like, a wrong idea might get like might backfire in future. Maybe earlier people believe that Bitcoin is free mm -hmm. and had businesses built on top of it. And maybe today people think that you know recursive covenants are not secured, and that's why we are supporting this. I like I think I agree that CDB is simple and that is a good enough merit. But we should also like address the community that look this is not dangerous and maybe we need more time for it. That's okay. Yeah. So so, uh, so I think one thing that's kind of interesting about that is that like. You might, you can agree or disagree, but at any point in getting the community convinced on the more complicated things, there will be a checkpoint where you pass people being comfortable with CTV's functionality. Uh, I agree. With and that. then, if that's true, the question becomes: once we've surpassed that threshold, uh, how much time do we get to the point that we actually might want to go to? And then, how many users come on board with like less secure, you know, custody solutions in the meantime between those two things? Why? Why would people be uncomfortable with this recursive stuff? Like, what are we? What's the um, discomfort that we're like talking about here? So uh, let's. Good question. Uh, yeah. Uh, so this recursive governance, in particular, uh, they allow you to like wall garden your coins. Maybe you can you can get into a covenant that you cannot escape out of, and this like. Yeah, this sounds dangerous, right? Why would you put your coins into something which you cannot get out of? Like, yeah, you know, you're just... we're not trying to make Bitcoin like Ethereum. Yeah, or maybe like you, uh, like one of the concerns is like just the U.S. government goes to Coinbase and says, put all your coins in this covenant, and it's a recursive covenant. So whenever you spend those coins, you need the signature of uh, like uh, a CC, and whenever you want to transact, you have to send a copy to them, and now they have everything. Why are we building this technology to? <laughs> Uh, that, that's a valid question, right? Uh, and that's why people are scared. But the bad news is they can already do that today. Uh, they can just do it with what we call multi-sync. 
but, but, I, but I the, think. To, well, I was going to say, I think to address the question, I think it's like the idea of the recursiveness, it's like you you pretty much have like a deadlock on that contract, which does what? Does that break Bitcoin or does that just break that transaction? What does that actually do? Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah. so I think that rec recursive is just like a little bit of a stand-in for like hard to analyze. And I think we're okay with any covenant that we know how to analyze to show that it's safe or that it's good or beneficial. And uh, that, that I think is, is why like for, for, for certain purposes, something like CPD is okay because it's very easy to analyze. So we're saying, okay, the analyzability of this is very basic. So we can say we know all possible state transitions, we're good. For me, the concern with recursiveness is that when you have these more flexible things, like you might not have properly proved that the covenant is actually correct, and there might be some sort of like Ethereum has these things with like you know recursive reentrant you know contracts where you call the thing and then you call into the thing and then the number doesn't get updated properly and then you burn all the money or you steal the money and those are the at least from my perspective those are the types of issues that our ability to prove and reason about these things like we would need a lot better tooling and infrastructure to do it um, safely. So 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 no loops are. Like enabled is that like an easy layman way of yeah no it's, okay. it's, you got to know the entire you yeah know, you, you know the you know the yeah. the whole span of the tree and, of possible and, states and, and that's a huge trade off to get that analyzability there are other things that also might have some similar analyzability but are more flexible but on all the choices I just did conservative uh, for this and you know I, I do think the conversation in defining the properties and not just having like one big stand in of recursive bad. You know, like it is, is really important, but it's the analyzability I think is really the, the thing we need. Yeah, so we can have analyzability in like per particular smart contract basis. If user just wants, like, if they want to shoot themselves in the foot, they can do that today. With like, they should know if they're shooting themselves yeah. in the foot. That's that's I think the thing, right? Yeah, if you if you are dealing with these type of things, you should know. Like for example, there are I think could be things in Lightning contracts which you can mess up, right? Uh, so like you wouldn't, uh, though. <laughs> yeah. So uh, whenever you're dealing with scripts, uh, you can mess up. It's just the, the thing sounds scary. It's like if you mess up, your coins are gone forever. Uh, there are also similar like risks associated with smart contracts today. So it isn't that we are adding some new thing which was not uh, like some new attack vector which was not present today. And as I mentioned, like for example, using maybe just a single signature today with, with music, maybe covenants are already on the way. Like we. Like, well, well, I, I, th I think the thing with Lightning is actually kind of interesting because uh, like, if you think about multi-signatures as being a type of covenant where the enforcement is done yeah. by people, like Lightning is already kind of a recursive covenant of sorts, just with people enforcing it. And if you've got automated things running this, it's just a question of like, is it the Bitcoin blockchain shooting you in the foot or is it the automated services you have that are doing it? And I think for an end user, it might not be terribly different. The, the, the covenants, and this is similar to what we said earlier, it would just be like, well, we're shifting it to something that requires less signatures. I have like sort of a, do we have time for like a... Wait, we're going until they kick us off. Okay. Yeah, if um, you're in the back and you're like, we get to off, we're going to... When they, when they come off the mics, we'll walk off stage. Okay, that sounds good. Um, so like the, so my question is like, is this kind of, has, maybe this is like totally not related, but I'd really like to hear. So Lightning Labs just released this thing that they're gonna add to the annexes of Taproots, which is like a whole new UTXO tree and like a whole new scripting language, um, this thing called Taro. Is that a covenant? Like maybe this is too, I know it just got announced yesterday, you guys haven't had a chance to look into it. Is that, are those covenants? Is like coloring, it's kind of like coloring Bitcoins, right? Is that, is that, does that count as covenants? Has like labs like basically launched covenants on Bitcoin already? with their tarot stuff and their color coin things, or is this stuff that we're talking about covenants-wise like totally different? Uh, I, I have reviewed it, so I don't know if you guys have had a no, chance. No, I, no, okay. So, so Jeremy, uh, you've been do you haven't been doing any talking on this panel. Why don't you go ahead and uh, yeah, help I'll, us? I'll, I'll, I, I know I've talked too much, so like, that's why I'm like, <laughs> uh, like, hopefully one of you had read it, but I've read it. So um, uh, I, would, I would answer that it, it is not, Bitcoin validated covenants, it is client side validated covenants, which means that you're free to, if you own one of these things, you can definitely burn all the coins and that will you know, escape because you've just messed it up. Um, but if you're running the, the software, you will generate artifacts that somebody else could verify. And that, and also just the technical note, they're not in the annexes, which is important for something. But anyways, they're, 
they are uh, they, they internally can have their own covenants and things, but there's always a top level clause which says basically, well, you're free to mess it up if you want to. And so Bitcoin does not have covenants, but in their system, it is kind of a covenant. If that makes I sense. See. So if you can do covenants that way, why do we need to change the Bitcoin script itself if we can you could, add? You could not systems. build a vault with uh, with Terra. I see. So. Yeah. The, one of the benefits of adding covenants to Bitcoin, like as of infra inside, like the Bitcoin infrastructure itself, is that now we can express things about Bitcoin, like your Bitcoin hoard, so to speak. Um, whereas adding stuff like the project that Lightning Labs announced um, doesn't give you that level of control, is my understanding. Okay. I'd say that's a correct understanding. I just want to, just to kind of put a cherry on top of, in terms of the devil's advocate stuff for CTV or whatever. I just want to include Barack here, just a little bit here. I know I know you're currently using Blockstream product Liquid. Yes. What is something like CTV potentially missing that you would want to see, or, or what? Where, how are you using Covenants, or how are you using Liquid where it's maybe not even going to be satisfied by some of this stuff? Oh yeah, I think we can. I just want to... Yeah, we can maybe, already, I think, emulate CTV in, to some extent in the elements of codes, but I think with a CTV, that emulation would more efficient because you can do like uh, the channel factories, for instance, in one byte as opposed to you know hundreds of lines of bytes, right? Um, I think you know elements of codes, right, are less controversial to maybe to pay, pay the, on some of them to pay the way for Bitcoin because they are pretty much not well tested yet, but they're being tested. And elements is based on the Bitcoin core code base, and I think are less less controversial to my observation, like things like checking from stack for checking arbitrary signatures and cats, like data manipulations, and maybe some arithmetic, right, could maybe potentially come to Bitcoin. Uh, but I think CTV, I think, is really simple, right? And from what I observe, like from the community, uh, people don't really, uh, Bitcoiners don't really want these highly expressive, I mean, very complicated proposals, right? Uh, they rather, uh, Powerful yet simple proposals, and I think you know when you think about it, covenants. This whole thing is really a spectrum, right? I think CTV perfects. I mean, it fits really in this middle of the spectrum, right? Um, whereas you know we could have uh, very expressive stuff uh, on the high, high end of the spectrum, but it doesn't really make sense to you know merge into Bitcoin. Thank you. And uh, in sixty seconds or less, what does CTV need to cross? into Bitcoin, what does it need going forward? Maybe you can talk a little bit about that. Um, yeah, quickly. so there's a website, utxos.org slash signals. This is kind of the best effort that I'm doing, which is just like making sure more people in the community want it. If anybody doesn't want it, they express in a coherent way what their opposition is. Uh, right now, there's like 130 people in organizations who have been like, yeah, seems good. There's like two people or three people who have been like, I don't want it because I think we have enough to work on with Taproot. Um, that's been the main, you know, kind of complaint. I think there are other people who might say they don't want it for various reasons. They should, like, I would really like to see more people give one of these things like, oh, we don't want Taproot because of quantum things, so that we can actually rebut the arguments. If you don't make the argument in the, you know, right forum, then it can't be rebutted. And then beyond that, uh, I just need to do like a, a binary release and pick some parameters, and that's it.